What's cracking, Goblinoids? See what I did there? Welcome to Elder Goblin Games, the universalist RPG channel where the DCs are made up and the stats don't matter. That's right, just like your summon familiar, they'll be forgotten for most of this campaign. So, Professor Dungeon Master has decided that July is Indie RPG Month, and then Jenny D declared that this is Kraken Week. Please, y'all, don't make me choose. There's 11 other months with no TTRPG community-based content, and we gotta cram them both into this one. But that's okay. I digress. So I say, well, why not both? That's right. It's Indie Kraken Week RPG Month. Bring on the sea-based mm. warfare. So here's a silly little video I'm gonna call Five Ways to Put Krakens Into Your Next Session. That's right, folks. These Krakens love Midwest emo anthems, and alternative fashion statements, as well as TTRPGs your dad's never heard of. Speaking of hipster RPGs, I just released my video of top 13 non-D&D games that I think you should try out. So if you haven't seen it yet, go check it out at the link here. But in all seriousness, I love all this community-based content. I think we're going to get a lot of cool videos about sea-based warfare, ships, and maybe even some swimming mechanics. But I really wanted to hone in on the Kraken itself, the Leviathan the legendary beast from beneath the seas. And to make it indie, I'm going to take a few examples from some lesser known RPGs and throw them on the screen in a minute. So without further ado, here are five ways to put a Kraken in your next game. Number one, the party may encounter the Kraken, but not necessarily fight it head on. In a popular level zero adventure that I'm going to try not to spoil too much, the PCs encounter a Leviathan in an unexpected place. As they carefully navigate the treacherous depths of the dungeon, they're left with a harrowing choice. Offer up bodies and treasure to the prying beast as a distraction, or be sniffed out by its probing tentacles. In this adventure, the players never really fight this leviathan directly, but if for some reason it does come to blows, they end up just having to fend off its tentacles as if they were each independent creatures, rather than face the Kraken directly, until it finally decides to give up and focus on easier prey. With this method, you could even put a Kraken in a cramped labyrinth with hidden pools and twisting tunnels, making each direction a frightening choice. Or put it in the bottom of a lake in a nearby fishing village, or the marshy temple of a forgotten god. Whatever you do, make sure to really telegraph the danger and give plenty of clues that these tentacles are searching out the party, seeking an offering. Number two. Here's a classic sci-fi trope for you, the alien baby. In this example, perhaps the local alchemist, cultist, or wizard has just returned from a deep sea voyage. He claims to have found the thing he needs to cure the local seaside town's affliction. He carries under his arm a large jar that you can only see the appendages of a strange tentacled creature. This mad scientist of a character wants to take the specimen and extract what he can to craft an elixir magic item, or whatever MacGuffin your world requires. But ever since your party laid eyes on the strange larva in the jar, they've been having dark dreams, visions, and flashes of a leviathan wreaking havoc on the seaside town every time they look into a pool of water. Taking these strange visions as omens of what's to come, the party must convince the wayward alchemist to return the larva back to the sea before it's too late. Number three, desiccated remains. A fleet of wary sailors returns to the port city with a grand prize, the calcified body of a kraken. One of the sailors had a brilliant idea, to turn the hollowed body of this kraken into a tavern, a wonder for travelers the world over to come and see. However, ever since the construction began, the local merfolk have grown aggressive, attacking fishermen on sight and vandalizing buildings on the outskirts of town. Now the party must decide between fending off the merfolk or trying to communicate with these strange beings and discover what it is that has them so bothered. Or perhaps the sight of their desiccated god is enough to send them into a mindless frenzy. Bum, bum, bum. Number four. There's a myth in a nearby village where a perfectly round pool of water begins to glow with an eerie light on the night of the waning moon. Those who gaze into the light of its shimmering waters return forever changed, or often, never return at all. What the party doesn't know is on those shadowy nights, this pool becomes a portal to another world. A world with a black sky and an even blacker sun, where even the very ground they walk seems to be made of flesh, bone, and sinew. 
shapes not unlike men walk about their faith their faiths faith of, <laughs> their faces writhing with tentacles their skin like that of crustacean beings from the depths the hideous sounds that echo from their lipless faces cause madness in those who overstay their welcome in the dark world and those who leave that dark place forever see a light shining in the night sky a sickly green beam beckoning them back to the glow of the well. Number five, a group known only as the Knights of the Kraken have been kidnapping the local fishers. These strangers are often seen vanishing into the waters of the deep lake on nights nearing the half moon. However, their faces are always concealed, hidden by strange masks featuring scales, fins, and antennae. Some folks even make strange claims, saying that they've seen these wretches bathing in the innards of the catches of the missing fishermen. Those brave enough to confront these strange knights are met with dark magic, tentacles summoned from the void, strangling seaweed, and a large eye whose gaze petrifies all who look upon it. All right, well, that's all five, but here's a bonus one for you. This is a fun idea. You could try to interweave all five of these stories and make a greater narrative. Perhaps that story even concludes with your party finding pieces of an ancient stone mech and bringing them together like a Power Ranger kaiju fight against the Kraken. Or not. I don't care. It's up to you. Ugh. Also, here are a few stat blocks I pulled from some lesser-known indie RPGs so that you can put a Kraken in your game, or a Leviathan, or the Sea Serpent, whatever, or use as inspiration to flavor as a Kraken. Well, I hope you've enjoyed this video in Indie RPG slash Kraken Week. So don't forget to hug a fish, like and subscribe, leave a comment, and if you do subscribe, make sure to hit the all instead of the personalized because YouTube has once again changed the way things work and Professor Dungeon Master is Tommy. And that means you won't see all of my content, but only that that the YouTube robots want you to see. Don't let AI win. I hope you found this entertaining, inspiring, or at the very least, that it brings your players to an early watery grave. Thanks for watching. And as always, remember, make mistakes, choose chaos, and most importantly, swim away. Have fun. Back to basics, let's get down to brass tacks and start rolling the dice. We need some practical facts, no more theory crafting or lofty abstracts. I need a concrete solution, a foregone conclusion. Back to basics, we're back to basics. We're back to basics We're back to basics